here it is guys in all its glory well actually there's two there's a couple more growing it's time to harvest oh let's do it oh artichoke down Hey friends, it's Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today, we're going to be doing a garden tour. I'm just like so amazed that we did this because a year ago, this was just maybe a thought. Like we thought maybe we would put gardens here. All of this, this whole area, the no-till is all, it was all started in the fall and it's been so rewarding and so worth the work. So I encourage you that even though it seems like a ton of work to expand and start new gardens, you'll be so grateful when you get to that first growing season and you get to look back at all your labor and all your dreams and all your plans and how much it paid off. It is early August, which means things are producing like crazy and it's time to give you an update on how everything's going. I'm going to start over here at these raised beds and I might harvest a little bit as we go because it rained all day and it's supposed to rain some more tomorrow. Thank God it's been pretty dry. So let's get to the garden tour. Here we have the largest ground tray plant ever. Check out this thing. It's one plant. One. It's bigger than any other ground tray by like 10 times and it is pumping out tons of fruit so I'm happy I come out here and I snack on them every day they rarely make it inside even though I have like 12 plants I've been eating them all outside are you gonna eat my ground cherries yeah what are you so cute I'm gonna harvest you I already harvested most of our onions actually. There was a bunch in this bed. There was a lot in this bed. And there are still some in this bed, but I harvested most of them. I am having an issue with leaf miners this year. They are going after my Swiss chard. That's what the damage looks like. And it gets really bad on certain leaves. You might even be able to see them flying around. I definitely can. I'm gonna be really careful to plant Swiss chard in a different location in the main garden because I know that I have a problem in this area. I've had a problem for two years in a row now, so I'm just not gonna plant Swiss chard or beets in this area because those are the things that they love the most. So crop rotation is gonna be my friend in that with those plants. I found one that had fallen. It's a little underripe, still a little green, but still so good. I love when they're just a touch underripe and they're like a little sour. I actually like them the best that way. That bed, we've got our giant ground cherry Swiss chard and some poppies that have already bloomed. Um, we've got some raspberry plants that I still haven't moved and won't get to moving until fall. Um, a lot of beans over here, they're starting to produce. I planted them. They were a second succession. So let's see if we can find anything in here. No ready green beans yet, but we should have a lot in just a little bit. I see baby beans all over the place. And then in this bed, we have some young carrots. Um, and then I just direct seeded some basil over here and some lettuce greens over on the other side. And I see some little sprouts coming up, so I'll show you guys those. We also have some basil right here, some arugula, some giant cosmos that are just starting to bloom. And over here is Persian zinnias. These are just gorgeous. Look at them. Look at those. They're all, they're all different and unique. They have different patterns. I love them. And then we have a Chinese five color pepper plant. As you can see right now, it's just one color and no more fruit as of yet on this thing. 
So this is my Secret Gardener Seed Challenge bed, mostly. We have a Black Beauty tomato, or so I believe. And this one's getting close to ready. It's softening, but still not quite ready. We have some onions in here that are really nice size. Red cabbage that I actually need to harvest. I'll make a video about what I'm doing with that. Um, some more basil. Calendula plant that's a little crazy. A couple more tomatoes that I kind of threw in the ground. Onions on this side. Look how nice size these guys are. I'm just going to leave them in for a few more days just to let them finish up. Even that one's huge. It's hiding under that cabbage. More beautiful black beauty tomatoes. This one's really nice and big. And there you can see the purple pepper. There it is. It's so striking next to these purple tomatoes, the purple peppers. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my bucket so I can harvest some onions as we're walking around because I'm seeing some onions that need to be harvested. I'll put them in here so they catch some of the dirt. So we have a bit of a Japanese beetle infestation on this raspberry plant. As expected, they love raspberries. So I got a few from that raspberry plant. I am going to give them to the chickens. Hey guys. She's attacking the tree. So here we are at the hookah culture bed. I'm not gonna give like an elaborate tour or anything, but I do need to pick a couple zucchini. So I'll go ahead and do that while I'm out here. I could spot one right there. I also have a cucumber that I need to harvest right back there. So I'll pick that little guy. You can see I have some powdery mildew on these plants in here. Um, I'm actually going to be pulling these guys out soon anyways because they're getting a little too big and they're kind of past their prime. I have some small little onions too that I need to pull out from here that are that are done like this one right here. See, really small but that's okay. I um, planted them really late. So I just spent a few minutes picking a couple of cucumbers and zucchinis and also pruning the zucchini because they had some powdery mildew. Oh, it's getting really bright and then cloudy and then bright and then cloudy. So in here, you'll see a lot of empty space. I just finished harvesting our potatoes. Let's walk back here real quick, see if there's any tomatoes that need to be picked. As you can see, the tomatoes are kind of crazy. I just didn't have a good system this year for trellising and I had to give up at a certain point because I just don't have the time. I have like over a hundred tomato plants. You know, it was just not feasible for me to stay on top of pruning and trellising and it's okay. Um, they're doing just fine. There's very little to no disease on them. You could see they're really healthy, producing lots of fruit. So I'm just gonna kind of let them do their thing. Maybe try to contain them just a little bit. It's getting so bright and so hot and so humid. So I'm gonna try to harvest some of these tomatoes pretty quick. The Napa Chardonnay blush have produced like crazy. Yeah, some of these guys split just cause they were, they got so rained on. I'll go ahead and give these two to the chickens. Here's an opaca, they're gorgeous. Just a couple more back here. As you can see, I've like barely pruned and still these plants are killing it be hard to pick with one hand. Made the mistake of planting these pumpkins too close so I can't get around on the side anymore. But the pumpkins are doing great. Planted them really late. I don't see any blossoms quite yet. So we'll see if we get any pumpkins from them. Oh gosh. Did this break again? I just tied these guys up. Oh. Yeah, the string keeps breaking because the weight of this is too heavy. Oh well, I give up. Let them just grow the way they want to grow. Some more. 
so next to the tomatoes some pumpkins we have our three sisters bed with corn we have beans around the corn pole beans climbing up the corn as you can see and some are not really climbing at all some are just puny little things and then we got some squash which kind of got taken down by vine borers mostly some plants are doing okay so so we'll see what happens with the squash I'm not too hopeful um, and the beans are doing okay we got some little baby beans here we'll see what happens we do have some corn some's really small and never got big enough but some right here this is your little ear of corn low expectations is good got this gorgeous green zebra tomato in here it's just huge a bunch of other really pretty ones back there they have very little disease this year I'm like really impressed because I haven't been good about pruning at all really really healthy plants and loaded with fruit over here we have okra and a mysterious species called torby and then we've got some more zucchini some succession planted it has some little fruit on it it's another little guy over here it's pretty close to being done these guys were also attacked by vine borer squash by vine borer bugs so i did apply bt to try to kill the vine borers before they were too big to take down the plant and i think it was mostly successful and then over here we've got some okra that i'm growing for the first time they're really healthy they're putting off blossoms and I have already picked off two okra never tried okra before here's one that's really pretty should be ready just like a day or so uh, let's see definitely slow growing for us it doesn't get real hot here so in this section we have some red Russian kale that I planted oh and you can see a common culprit of kale right there look at them blending in but honestly this kale looks really healthy i don't see a lot of damage from them so i'm kind of surprised to actually see one i'm gonna go ahead and pick that sucker off but we've got these beautiful zinnias these are some more persian zinnias and then we have our tomatillos which are just full and huge i think we have four or six i can't remember um and i've already picked some see this one in here is almost ready it's starting to yellow and a lot of them are almost ready see that one it's almost ready too I mean this is just loaded with fruit look at all those it's like a forest of tomatillos so this is one of my favorite parts of the garden it's just so full and actually let me show you my very 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 favorite part and do something really exciting that I've been looking forward to but also kind of scared to do and that is harvest our very first artichoke here it is guys in all its glory well actually there's two there's a couple more growing it's time to harvest oh let's do it oh artichoke down it's a beauty oh gosh I can't believe I actually grew this in upstate New York they said I couldn't do it all the peoples and I did it and it's big like this is a big artichoke this is no like tiny thing that's so far the only artichoke plant that's producing the really cool thing about this artichoke producing is it produced in our back to Eden beds which have never been tilled uh, I didn't add a lot of compost or anything when I planted so it's a good indication that we have really good soil and also that you can have a successful first year garden no-till. You can have a successful no-till first year garden. This is proof of it. Look at this. It's not perfect, but it's pretty abundant. And check out the size of this onion that I need to harvest. This thing is really big, guys. This is, guys, this is the largest onion I've grown. I don't know if you can tell this has got to be I'll wait when we get in the house but it's got to be like a pound and a half maybe two pounds the largest one and it was grown in these back to Eden no-till beds the weed pressure is so low it's beautiful it retains moisture so well I mean 
we've had like a drought for the past month or so and I haven't watered. Let me pull a couple more onions. So once they tip over like this, this is when they're ready to harvest. Gosh, these are so beautiful. Look at these guys, they're all so beautiful. Gosh, these baskets are filling up and I've only gone through like two rows, the hookah culture bed. We still have like all those and tons of more tomatoes harvest. There's no way they're all gonna fit in this, this basket. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of hard carrying this with one hand. Let's see. Yeah, this onion's already tipped over too. And I don't know what these are because they're different. They're obviously different. I have no idea what happened there, so. No clue guys, really don't know. So on this side we have more onions, which you can see some of them are super big. I mean, there's just beautiful onions. I've already pulled out a bunch. And then we've got two other large artichokes. And this is the one that's producing. It's got some small little guys coming in. This guy, this guy. There's some little ones forming down there. So really excited about the artichoke. Then on this first trellis, I have cucamelons and a nasty Japanese beetle. Look at that guy, go away. I flick them off if, if I'm lazy. And then we have um, Armenian cucumbers, but so far they've only put off, was it male fruit, female fruit? The one that doesn't produce the fruit, or they've only put off the blossoms that don't produce fruit. I can't remember if it's male or female. I don't see any blossoms with fruit. And then of course we have cucamelon. And you can see, got little baby cucamelons. They're so cute. Lots of little baby fruit. But I don't know what's up with these beautiful cucumber plants, with the Armenian cucumbers. I'm not sure. If you know, comment below. Let me know what's going on with those guys. And I have some of the Armenian cucumbers also on this side. And then some pickling cucumbers. There's one down there. See. They're starting to, to put off some fruit too. There you go, little, little baby cucumber. Is there anything as cute as a baby cucumber? Any fruit? So I'll, I'll take you guys back down this row and show you guys what's on these trellises. But we've got some uh, larger than I thought pumpkins and they're really cool looking hanging down like this. But I need to get some of my produce bags around them and tie them up because they need, they need to be tied up at this point. This is my first year using arch trellises and I love it. I love coming out and tying things up and there's actually like five, maybe five like pumpkin, mini pumpkin plants on this one side. So I planted way too many, but I honestly don't really care. I just don't really care. As long as I kind of like tie them up in places where they have room to grow, they're doing fine, so. And I don't remember what this is, and I don't remember what this is. So I apologize in advance for that. And then over here, we've got a buttercup squash on the side, these little fruit. They get to be about this big, about that big, fully grown, and they're my favorite winter squash. They taste like a cross between a butternut squash and a potato. Like more tender, less, they're not really stringy at all. So, so delicious. And then on this side, I believe we have butternut squash, but I haven't seen any fruit yet. So far, no fruit. And here we have a pepper jungle. These plants are huge and they're loaded. I had to stake a bunch of them up. I mean, look at the size of these plants. They're just huge and they're loaded with peppers. Like this is their corbachi. It's got so many peppers on it. Um, this is a poblano. You can see peppers kind of hanging everywhere. Been harvesting the peppers like crazy. We've got lots of spicy peppers, lots of bell peppers. Um, just 
I think I planted like 80 or 90 peppers and they're kind of just like all in here. They're all the way down, all the way over here. And you can see the ones in here are smaller. They were mulched with wood chips and not with rotted hay. And so I actually went in and put down some rotted hay with goat manure mixed in um, on top. And since then they've started doing a lot better. So consensus is, is that the pepper plants love the goat bedding as mulch. So yeah, you can see this one is small, but it's like loaded with blossoms and fruit. This one's got a lot of blossoms too. So these ones up here are small, but they're doing really well. Okay, so I started my eggplants under row cover and I just removed the row cover. I used row cover to keep the flea beetles off and the second I removed the row cover, the flea beetles found the eggplant and they're all over them. I think at this point the plants are big enough to handle it, so we'll just see. Um, next year I'm just gonna keep the row cover on. But here's some eggplant in here. They're not real big, they're not real healthy or anything, but um, they're doing good. I've got my peanuts in this area right here. I've got two different kinds, like a regular peanut and a purple peanut. And the plants are doing, the plants are doing really well. They're throwing off lots of blossoms. Um, and then in this area, I had lentils and I pulled all those out. They did not do well. They just didn't produce a lot at all. I have a couple zinnias and I have some beets in here that are pretty big. Let's see that one, it's pretty good size. It's so humid out because it just rained. It's not normally super humid here. Okay, so in here we've got some pole beans that are starting to produce and hang down. They're really beautiful. They haven't been very productive so far. Let's see some up there. Let's see one, it's ready to be picked. And lots of blossoms. Not a lot of beans, but it's been dry, so I think that's the reason why. And I just planted a couple more. These guys will, will climb. This side we have noodle beans. They haven't done very well as of yet. I think they were thirsty because after today they're looking healthier. Um, but they are climbing up to about here. Hopefully they'll have enough time to produce but it might just not be the year for noodle beans. Got our peppers all the way down. Here we have a couple small watermelon plants. Doing okay. They're pretty small, but they have some fruit on them, so we'll see. And then the peppers, of course. And then the real star of the show is the moon and star watermelons. They've gone surpassed all the other watermelons by far. I've just been, some of these, this one like wasn't pollinated right. One of them is already pretty large and beautiful. Look at that. Little stars. We've got a, a few little fruit. There's one. The vines are kind of trailing out here, trailing out over there. Really healthy. They're growing pretty good. On this side we have cantaloupe. And they were really slow to start, whereas last year they started really early. So, um, but I did see a cantaloupe the other day. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, there's one. Let's see a little guy. And then we have some amaranth behind the trellis. And these were, these were all fava beans, but they got some weird disease or blight or something. So I'm gonna pull them out. Um, and then this, this right here is a very, very tall, volunteer sunflower. I have no idea what kind of sunflower this is, but it's like way taller than me. And the stalk is huge and it has like a million heads coming out. So it's gonna be gorgeous. And it, like I said, it volunteered. Um, and then behind the fava beans, we have a lot of soy edamame or soy. And we've got, um, I can't remember what this is called, but it's the one that Jess at Roots and Refuge loves so much. Um, I totally am blanking on the name right now, but I know it. I just can't think of it in this moment. Garbanzo beans. Let's see. I've got a few garbanzos on them. And then this whole section right in here is dry turtle beans. So I'm going to let these guys all produce. 
let them all dry out and then I'll be saving them for the for the dry beans. You can see these little Japanese beetles though. They're the worst. Look at them. And in here I've got six grow bags with sweet potatoes. You can see them all right there. And some more summer squash that were succession sowed. So we'll have summer squash all summer long. And I've already picked some fruit from there. And then this, this area all right in here is my cabbage. And some of these are ready, ready for harvest. This guy's like a pretty good size. This one's a really good size. This is a good size. So I need to harvest those and make sauerkraut as well as some pickled cabbage with the red cabbage. And there's more over here as well as some very small little onions. Not sure why this variety just did not get very big. Then I planted some cucumbers on both sides of this trellis right here. These ones have not started blossoming very much yet. There's like one blossom. So I don't know if we're gonna get a whole lot. I think it's just because they're on the, the um, north side. The ones on the south side have tons of blossoms and lots of little tiny fruit. So they've just been slow this year. They were started all direct sown. We had just such, such a cold, wet spring. And of course you have my tea and herb garden. The chia plants are nice and tall. We've got like zinnias in here, marigolds, calendula, straw flower about to open up, lavenders, some echinacea. There's winter savory. This is some rosemary. We've got some yarrow. This is mullein that I transplanted from another area. We have little baby sage. Here's another echinacea, smaller one. Chamomile. All these different kinds of basil. So this is holy basil or Tulsi. And then we've got Thai basil, some regular basil. Um, we've got cinnamon basil, which has a beautiful flower to it. And I think this is more Tulsi, a purple basil. This is sorrel, it's a perennial. Um, you can eat it like spinach bee balm that has bloomed and is on its way out but it's a perennial so it will come back and the chocolate cosmos which are beautiful this really pretty white lavender flower lavender lavender um, lemon balm some more dahlias and here we have our pineapple sage which smells so good it smells just like pineapple so i'm going to use that and i'm going to make some tea with it so that was all the no-till permaculture garden. Here is the original garden, and I'm not gonna spend a whole time, in, a whole lot of time in here because honestly, it's been pretty disappointing. Not a lot of successes, a lot of failures, and an overwhelming amount of weeds. We did get a good harvest of peas. Not awesome. I still need to pull the plants out, but we still have a few peas coming in, and they're so good. I love peas in the garden. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I have lots of winter squash, but I don't think it's doing very well because it was so dry for so long and I couldn't water back here. As disappointing as it's been, we do have some spaghetti squash. You can see there. One right there. There's another one in there. There's one growing over there. Last year we had a lot of success with winter squash. This year I don't think it's gonna be our year, but I planted a lot in a lot of different places. I have some over on the arch trellises. I have some by the corn, and then I have some in this garden. So we'll end up with something, and then next year I'm gonna brainstorm some solutions to our vine borer issue, vine borer issue. And then the bean teepee was kind of a flop because of weed pressure. I just don't have time to weed my life like our lives are so busy as as all of you I imagine have busy lives as well and so really um, in the fall we're gonna come in here and we're gonna turn this into a back to Eden garden because it's just a lifesaver when it comes to weed pressure control but you can see the beans are starting to grow up the teepee next year I'm gonna plant them on the inside of the bean teepee once we get control over the weeds it's like my favorite thing in the world to see on the ground I'm obsessed with them. Couple cool things I want to show you. Also, can you see the solar panels on the barn in the background? I planted sesame. The sesame is doing great. Although it does have a lot of aphids. 
like it's totally overrun by aphids but there are lots of pods these flower pods and I think that's where the seeds are I do need to come out here and spray with neem oil though because it's just completely overrun by aphids Ooh, look a dahlia getting ready to bloom that's so exciting so in here I've got a bunch of dahlia tubers that were given to me um, I have my rice there's my rice look at that so I have a few rice plants just for an experiment this year and I'm really excited about those and then I have some ground cherries because I started so many this guy ground cherries whoops I've got a little handful of ground cherries I've got like 50 more tomatoes these guys have more disease than the other ones which is really interesting because this garden was tilled last year but you can see like look at that plant right there it's got a lot of disease and then this plant has a lot of disease they're just not nearly as healthy as the others another cool thing I wanted to show you guys I think my quinoa is almost ready to harvest check it out look at how beautiful it is it's so beautiful this one's just gorgeous if I can harvest it right find a way to get the shaft off of the flower and just get the seeds I will be so happy because it's beautiful it's prolific and I, I love quinoa, so really, really healthy too. So I was really excited to show you guys that. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys is our row of sunflowers, which hasn't bloomed yet, but it will, and it will be beautiful when it does. So you can see all of them as I walk. There's so many. I'm so excited for them to bloom. And they get bigger at the back. I'm not sure why. I might have planted big ones in the back. So you can see all the sunflowers kind of cool because they're all in like a really straight line so and a lot of these are multi-head sunflowers too so they'll produce a lot of flowers like you can see in here there's gonna be a flower there's 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 a flower lots of flowers